With so much of the flight experience taking place online and at computer or kiosk terminals, the human interaction of many flyers with their airline narrows down to a very small group of people, flight attendants. Unless you have a bag to check or questions at the gate, the flight attendants are going to be the face of your airline for you. And once on board, they call all the shots. They decide whether you get a small cup or a glass of water. Pretty much everything. The world of flight attendants is our interest on the program. Welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Ju Ukitumbi, and our flight is ready for takeoff. Whenever they don the uniform, they're expected to appear prim, proper, and elegant. In the air, they attend to passengers with utmost politeness. Cabin attendants came into existence in 1930 when a young nurse named Ellen Church, along with Steve Stimson of Boeing Air Transport, came up with a new sort of attendant. Church proposed that registered nurses would make an ideal addition to the flight crew as they could take care of any passenger that got sick. Boeing, then an airline, as well as a plane manufacturer, hired eight nurses for a three-month trial run. The new attendants, who would come to be called stewardesses, soon became an integral part of the airline industry. In time, these attendants were no longer required to have a nursing degree, but their nurturing, maternal character remained a key element in the profession. Until recently, flight attendants were under strict control. They were not allowed to be married, and most airlines had certain constraints on their height, weights, and proportions. Their clothing was similarly restrictive. But in all these, their primary responsibility was to ensure passenger safety. Well, when I'm on board and I'm working, welcoming passengers, passengers, I welcome them with smile, and I check their boarding pass, take them to their appropriate seats, and sometimes we serve them water or juice just to get them relaxed before the flight. Our training here teaches us to be well disciplined and patient, like no matter how unruly a passenger might be towards you, you just have to keep smiling and be patient with them. The airline sees the cabin crew as the only means or one of the most important means that um, guests get to relate with the airline, understand what the airline wants to do, the vision, the mission and all of that. So first impression really matters. Most times these people have first time contact with us and taking a look at me, you'd want to see um, a well-dressed, well-groomed, beautiful um, personality that can relay all of the mission and vision of the company. The number of flight attendants required on flights are mandated by international safety regulations. For planes with up to 19 passenger seats, no flight attendant is needed. For larger planes, one flight attendant per 50 passenger seats is needed. The majority of flight attendants for most airlines are female, though a substantial number of males have entered the industry. I was working as a marketer when someone saw the way I did my duties, went about my regular duties and now said, okay, why uh, you should try being a cabin crew. And I, an opening came and I applied for it and here we are. In the aviation industry, everything comes around service. You're relating with people, you're, you're introducing your products to customers. So basically you're having a whole lot of customer uh, relations going around. So. For many of those flying this trade, it has always been a dream. Uh, I've always really wanted to fly as a cabin crew. I've had uh, a mentor that was a flight attendant with a Virgin, and I've always looked up to her. And um, I really wouldn't, I couldn't wait to be a flight attendant. I've always, always loved flying. That was like um, 2010, I saw the flight attendant. And my biggest achievement is uh, actually seeing myself was when I dressed, not flying as a passenger, but flying as a crew. I was so happy with myself. 
a dream whose fulfillment most times didn't meet family approval. The aircraft is an amazing, it's an amazing work of technology, so why not just find out how it works? And then I graduated, during NYC, I told my mom, I'd love to be a cabin crash. She goes, no way. That's not going to happen. You are going for your master's. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Then two weeks later, she called me. I said, okay, since you want to be a cabin crew, that's, that's okay. I have still some, some money. That's what I'm going to give you. Above all, a cabin crew member travels the world and experiences foreign cultures. Every single working day brings a new destination and new passengers. It's a job that is more varied and diverse than almost any other. Training for this profession can be rigorous and challenging. Let's hear a line trainer and cabin services manager tell us all about that. The primary duty of a cabin attendant is uh, safety and security on board, taking care of the passengers and then the aircraft generally. Um, that's why they go through a series of safety and uh, uh, training. Now, service is secondary. However, you need um, a very sound cabin crew a coming with a sound mind and uh, a good diction to be able to carry out this service. But most people feel cabin crew just there to serve tea and coffee. But their primary duty is safety and security. Averagely, the training takes uh, 15 days. That's for people that have been flying and then they went off. But if you're starting, if you, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's it. And then basically when they come back to school, we take them from step to step, safety and emergency equipment. We take them on dangerous goods. We take them on service procedure. We take them on um, safety and emergency procedure, which is very, very pertinent. And then so many others. They do indoctrination. They do uh, out of the uh, first aid. First aid training where we practically carry out all these drills. And then finally, they do the security training, onboard security training. And then um, after the old training, they go for the practical drills, which entails evacuation, sliding down from the aircraft. You intend to fly with the appropriate command. Um, we just got to do with standard operating procedure and the standard operating procedure differs from one airline to the other. This simply means um, you having your own method of call out at every point in time. However, it must be in conformity with the regulations. Okay. After that training, then, then they do the practicals, then the teaching drill. There's a ditching where they get into water, swim from one, I mean, a certain length, and then learn to go into the slide raft and how to erect the canopy and all that. And so basically that's all we do. So even after the training, the cabin crew uh, will have to fly, um, do some family, they do aircraft visit where they revisit how to open the exits, check all the doors, go to the cockpit, equipment and all that. And then they now do a familiarization flight. It depends from one airline to the other. For us, it's six sectors. You fly six sectors for us to check you out. And after the six sectors, if we feel you're okay, we as in the line trainers, the instructors, then, then if we are satisfied, then you can join the group. There is more to come on the interview after the break. <laughs>